Hello. Uh, my name's Rick Banks. Um, I'm a graphic designer based in London, and I'm going to talk about a, a book called Football Type uh, that I published last year in September. And I've only got 10 minutes, so it's going to be quite fast paced, so bear with me. Um, so the start of the book goes back to when I was 10 years old and I was obsessed with a goalkeeper, Peter Schmeichel. Um, so my mum kindly went to the, the sports shop and bought me the replica top with Schmeichel printed on the back. And when she gave it me, I, uh, I remember nearly crying my eyes out because uh, the font wasn't the uh, correct official font. <laughs> it was totally different, as you can see. Um, but I remember sketching the official one in, in my notebook at primary school, so I've always been obsessed with, um, with football typography. And I did a quick Google and I, and I realised that there wasn't a book out there celebrating football and typography. So I bought a scrapbook and researched lots and lots of type. It's Cantona and, and Pelé. Maradona and Messi, number 10s. And I, I started to realise that recently top brands were, in, uh, were investing in top designers to create shirt lettering. Um, for example, Vasifa in Spain produced Barcelona's current, current typeface. And Paul Barnes designed uh, England's Giotto lettering in 2012, the Rooney one at the top right. And the famous design agency GBH designed Puma Pace for uh, the Champions Italy. So on top of all the, the lettering research, I started to learn um, lots about quirky stories involving players' choice of number. Um, for example, Zamorano was so pissed off that Ronaldo took his number nine shirt, he opted for this uh, quirky one plus eight to make nine. <laughs> so I thought by adding these, these stories into the book, it, it would add something more than design and appeal to the non-designer as well. So when I started to realise it was coming together as a, as a real project, I, I wanted to do the book for charity. Uh, this is something I've, I've always wanted to do and I was inspired by a friend who, who produced a book to raise money for, for cancer charities. So I started digitalising old typefaces and this was England's in, in the 80s. And then I, I started to put them in an editorial layout and I thought, oh, it's, it's coming together now. And um, the book sort of organically grew after contacting and, and meeting people. Um, it, it massively snowballed. I didn't, I didn't think it would be uh, what it was. And I realised the book would only be uh, cool if uh, modern and official alphabets were shown. Um, after all, there's nothing worse than a, than a fake alphabet like the Schmeichel top. But um, it was really tricky to get all the brands and clubs on board within one book. Um, it, was so tricky, uh, so, it was so tricky that the book took two years to produce, um, getting sign-offs from everyone. But my, I firstly started to contact top designers such as Paul Barnes, who I've mentioned, shown here, and um, this is one of my favourite typefaces in the book, I don't know if you can see, but it's Duotone, there's two different reds, and then the famous uh, type designer Bruno Marg was happy to be involved, he did Tottenham's typeface, and Vassifer, who I mentioned before, um, sent me their Gaudi inspired alphabet there, it was, was inspired by Gaudi's chimneys at the bottom there, I think they still wear this. And Mark Bonner from GBH sent me over their Puma typefaces and, and guidelines on the right. And this was Gaffer. And he had to get special permission from Puma to allow, uh, allow me to publish, publish the uh, works. But once one brand was on board, it, it was easier to get the others. Uh, Paul Barnes, who I mentioned before did the England um, typeface, he, uh, he gave me the details of the creative director at Umbro. And he invited me up to Manchester to have a look at their archives. Um, as you probably could guess, I was like a kid in a sweet shop. And without doubt, this is the best shirt in the archives. The Mighty Whites, Bolton. Uh, but joking aside, Umbro were absolutely amazing. Um, I could, they told me to pick out any shirt and they photographed it and, and retouched it for free. And then Adidas soon got on board after I emailed their uh, agent, ad agency, I should say, uh, 180 in Amsterdam. And their lawyers had to sign off every bit of copy and credits, hence the huge list on the left. And then Nike sent me their World Cup alphabet featuring all the different countries. Can't remember what World Cup this was from though. So the brands were done, um, and now it's time to start of contact individual clubs 
and Chelsea were super nice and sent me their retro looking typeface and again I just contacted clubs uh, emailed used LinkedIn rang people and yeah United were happy to get involved and apparently Sir Alex Ferguson signed off this design um, and I didn't want the book just to be flat vectors, I thought it would be quite dull, so I started to contact some of the top photographers in the world um, to donate some of their sort of stunning imagery of footballers. I, want, I wanted the book to have some sort of pace to it. And when I was doing my research, I stumbled across this article by um, Sheridan Bird on the Creative Review blog. And it was the only article online talking about football and typefaces. So I, I contacted him to, to write the foreword for the book. And in that article, Sheridan interviewed a designer called um, Anthony Barnett. And Sheridan kind of gave me his uh, contact details. And Anthony's now reti retired now in, in France, but he, he worked at a company called Sporting ID for many years and was responsible for some of the most iconic football typefaces. This is inspired by waving flags at um, football grounds. And Anthony did a lot of work for Real Madrid as well for this typeface and he, he put me in touch with them and they were really strict in what I could say and, and design. Uh, a lot of back and forth with them. I, I couldn't mention any Madrid players for example. Uh, and it's a cliche but I, I had the idea for the book covers uh, in the shower and I wanted to number the limited edition books using shirt lettering. And Anthony put me in touch with a director at Sporting ID who produced the majority of the uh, shirt lettering and the badges you get on the sleeve. And uh, he kindly donated all the lettering uh, for the book. And so I went up to Newcastle um, to test the numbers um, on the book cloth, which was donated by Winters. And I, I wanted to emulate a cotton shirt, so the, the books wrapped in cotton. And the numbers at the top there were, were flocked and, and I was told these were being discontinued for the current season. But I wanted to use them so the book had a, a textural quality. I don't really like the new PVC ones at the bottom. And this was the result. Uh, I'm happy I didn't have to iron them on myself. The amazing people at Identity did all that. And this is the flocking that I talked about, so it has like a felt-like quality, so I, I wanted the user to sort of feel the book as well. And I used all the different numbers that you can use in the Premier League. I think each club can opt for any colour they want. And I decided to publish it myself um, as I was inspired seeing the, the likes of Spin and Brown's top design agency publishing their own books. And I also decided to create a bespoke website for the book where customers could pick their own number within a price range. My friend Tom Duncalf uh, built the site for free and I, and I priced them at £50 to £35 as I wanted to make them affordable for everyone, especially students. So the gold ones would be... £50 and the, the black ones were £35 and they sold out so quickly, I think they sold out in three weeks um, but they, they were selling so quickly that the same numbered book uh, was being sold within 30 seconds of each other and that was something I didn't anticipate when I built the site, it was quite mad. And this is my flat, <laughs> imagine picking one number out of this lot, it was an absolute nightmare. And even when I woke up, I saw books. It was horrible. But thankfully, I've got a kind and wonderful girlfriend. I have to say that, she's in the audience there, but who helped me with the packing. Um, but the, the logistics of it uh, and sending them out was by far the hardest thing about the project. I don't think I've ever been as stressed uh, in my life. I've got a stress arm, I think. I was scratching it all the time. And those sacks weighed a bloody ton as well. And the reaction to the book's been amazing. I've, I've won a few awards for it and even been on the telly. But the best thing about the book was giving the money to, to charity. And it was one of the best feelings I've had and, and more rewarding than any design project or, or award. And I, and I got to meet my hero, Kevin Davis, Bolton legend. <laughs> uh, 
and uh, the 22.4k raised um, from the book has gone to a, a Bolton grassroots football club. I work with a, a, the charity Football Foundation who hunted this club down, and they were they were waiting 10 years for funding, and so I donated 22.4, and Kevin Davis donated 20. And the picture at the bottom there, the bottom left, is their current changing rooms. Uh, it's a shipping container. Uh, it was absolutely horrible seeing it. Um, so the money will go towards new changing rooms and pitches for grassroots football, which is a, it's a great thing. I can't wait to see it in six months. I think it opens. And that's it. Thank you.